Hi, I'm Andrew Morton. Um, I recently became the director of the software engineering program, but at heart I'm a computer engineer and on paper. So this is kind of this is my kind of course. Um, <clears throat> so this is a course for people who like computer hardware, um, which is usually a smaller subset of CS students. But um, I started as a CS undergrad and became a computer engineering grad student. So um, there, that's better. Thanks. Um, so. One of the key things that you'll learn in this course is about the design of processor architecture, and it's usually called the microarchitecture. So, you know, you've got your um, x86 instruction set, and there's been many different processors along the way that have implemented it. So, how those things get designed. Uh, another key aspect of the course is you actually get practice designing your own uh, hardware. I'm going to make you build uh, build a processor. So, more on that later. Um, the background knowledge that you need for this course is the concepts from CS251, uh, basically what, uh, what a pipeline is about. Um, and it ties in a little bit with CS343, which is concurrent programming, but more in a complementary way, so it's not a prerequisite. So uh, the kinds of topics that we'll cover, um, a, a key thing when you're designing a processor is figuring out uh, how fast it's going to be. And so benchmarking software on designs is a key, key thing. Uh, it drives all the design choices that are made. So we start with that. Um, we go back to basic pipeline concepts. So we take, you know, in uh, CS251, uh, you took the, uh, a single cycle MIPS uh, processor and broke it into stages. And we're going to look at that in some more depth about the, the issues that play there. Uh, we're going to look at superscalar pipelines. So this means uh, processors that can finish more than one instruction per cycle, uh, which is key to performance. And um, what goes along with that is out-of-order execution. So uh, modern processors don't execute all the instructions in the order that you program them. They mix them up. Uh, and as long as they satisfy control and data dependencies, uh, it turns out all right in the end. And it's a pretty complex beast, so uh, we'll, we'll look at that. Uh, key concepts in there are branch prediction. Um, we'll talk about um, the G-Share branch predictor, which is the basis of most of the ones being used now. Uh, different forms of data forwarding, register files, stuff like that. So this is kind of the processor here. Uh, we'll, we will talk about memory structures, so we'll go back and visit virtual memory again, not in much detail. Uh, you get that in the operating systems course. Uh, we will talk about cache structures. Um, this can be useful even just as a programmer to understand if you're doing high performance uh, computing, um, to understand how caching issues can affect your program performance. So you'll learn some of that. Uh, kind of the fun stuff, we'll learn about multiprocessors. So when you've got multiple cores or even multiple chips, uh, how do they share memory between their caches? And that's the cache coherency problem. And also, this is related to the concurrent programming, uh, how do you synchronize threads between processors? Uh, so you'll learn a bit about the hardware involved in that. And also multi-threaded processors. So when you have one core that can execute more than one thread at the same time, how does that happen? Uh, Intel calls that hyper-threading, but there's different flavors of it out there. So those are the, the concepts that we'll cover, and maybe some other stuff, depending on time. Um, I, in the past, I've lectured all off the blackboard. This time, I think I'm going to do a bit more off of uh, PowerPoint so that I have more time to discuss the project in class. Um, <clears throat> there will be about two pen and paper assignments near the start of the course, which is just you know, dealing with the, the more theoretical stuff, measuring performance, that kind of stuff. Um, there aren't official tutorials, but we work them into the class time to introduce you to Verilog. This is uh, one of the two key hardware description languages that are used in industry, Verilog and VHDL. So you get to learn this, uh, and then you're going to use it in your project. The project's significant, so I've bumped up its weight to 40%. And in this project, um, I give you kind of a skeleton of a pipeline processor. Um, it's my own design. I don't know how good it is, but um, it's um, yeah, a design instruction set. I give you a skeleton of the processor pipeline, and then you fill it in uh, in the class over the term. And so there'll be different deadlines for stuff associated with that. So adding in stuff that's directly related to lectures, like a branch predictor, 
uh, data forwarding, out of order execution, all that kind of stuff. So it's challenging, uh, not for the faint of heart, but if you like hardware, if you like Lego when you're a kid, this may be a good course for you. Um, and in the past, I've had a midterm and an exam. I'm think leaning more towards just having the final exam uh, this time around because of the heavy project in the course. So the exam will be lecture contents. And also, um, I'll have a handful of assigned readings from kind of seminal papers on these different concepts that we cover. So that's CS450 in a nutshell. Um, I'm open to questions if you have any.